acid. So uh, water can be both. It has a special name. Actually. Yeah, it's let's amphoteric. Yeah, well, let's save that for a second. Let's finish this. I'm sure. not, I agree we should talk about that. Um, the acid then gives it to the ammonia, so that makes this the base. That makes this the... Conjugate the acid. Conjugate acid. And this is the conjugate base. You'll be asked in your homework to identify the conjugate acids yeah. and conjugate bases. Another way to look at the conjugate thing is if you reverse the reaction, which one would be the acid? Yeah. So if you reverse that. the reaction, the ammonium there would be the acid. So that's he would the give this his hydrogen away. Right. So he could become ammonia. So that helps you detect which one's the conjugate. Now, Mr. Sam's just mentioned a little bit of word, a big word here. Let's write it out. Amphoteric or amphoterism. An amphoteric substance is a substance that can either be an acid or a base. So as you see in this slide, um, water is actually acting as an acid. And in the previous slide, the water acted as a base. So water is said to be a amphoteric substance. Amphoteric substance. So there you go. All right. All right. Now, that also leads us to this concept of the acid dissociation constant, which means that um, some acids are strong and some acids are weak, mm -hmm. which we should probably talk about. Actually, we do right here. We can, uh, Is this out of order? Mm, I think it's, it's, all right. it's equilibrium. Yeah, we can do it. We've already talked about equilibrium. Yeah. So let's take that at reaction that we had just a minute ago, HC2H3O2. Um, this is um, acetic acid. We could just say that it dissociates into hydrogens plus acetates. Right. Now, all he's done here is he's basically removed water from the equation. He removed the water molecule on the left, and he removed the water ness from the hydronium ion from the right. Let's write it both ways, yeah, let's maybe, and then talk about the difference. Yeah. Now, if you remember in your equilibrium uh, chapter, the last chapter, chapter 13, um, we do not write solids or liquids in our equilibrium expression. So by removing liquid water from this equilibrium from the equation, it makes the equilibrium easier to write because we don't have to ignore anything. We just get rid of it ahead of time. So I'm putting all the states of matter in all these. Yeah. So we have aqueous here, aqueous, 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 liquid, aqueous, aqueous. So now we can find the K equilibrium constant. Now we've been learning a lot about Ks and yep. you've gotten good with these. This is called the KA for acid and it is going to be just like it did before, products the over products reactants. over the reactants, which in this case will be the hydrogen, or you could write hydronium, it would make no difference, times the acetate divided by the acetic acid. Now, a lot of students sometimes struggle a little bit with the concept that this is aqueous, but it's not dissociated. Yeah. That's a little bit weird. Why is that, Mr. Sam? Well, just like a sugar molecule, if you dissolve it in water, it's aqueous, but nothing is dissociated. Yeah. And this is an, what we call a weak acid, and weak acids do not dissociate very well. So it does dissociate, but only partially. Right. So uh, only some of them have broken apart. Right. Broken so apart. It, it dissolves like a, mo a covalent compound, but it dissociates a little bit like an ionic one. And then there are tables. The, the values of the Ka's tend to be very small. So you look at the table that's in your handout there. Yeah. These are all um, going to be less than one. Notice all these numbers are less than one. And so you have very small numbers. Um, th this is the biggest one that I know of that's considered a weak acid. And down to uh, phenol, and you can see different atoms. In fact, you can even see here the ammonium atom, or ion, pardon me. The ammonium ion is, is, is a weak acid. Very weakly acidic. It's yeah. very weakly acidic, which we just kind of talked about just a little bit ago as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Acid. Yep. Okay, how do we know about acids and bases in terms of their strength? Well, strong acids, it's easy to know about. What is a strong acid? The strong acids are ones that fully dissociate when you dissolve them in water. And we say 100%, it's more like 99.999 something because there's no such thing as really 100% dissociation. But we say, for all intents and purposes, they 100% dissociate. And the word dissociate really means to break apart into ions. Now, the word dissociate actually is used out in the regular world. What does the word dissociation mean, out, excluding the concept of acids and bases? Uh, it's like when you break up something, yeah, like you, you dissolve a company or... Yeah, you can dissociate a company, you can dissociate a relationship mm -hmm. with somebody. Let's say that you, you're going out with a girl and, uh, or a boy, and uh, you, one of you people say, that's it, we're done, let's yeah. dissociate. 
So it's kind of the opposite of, of an association. Yeah, it's the opposite of association. All right. And then what's a weak acid? Uh, weak acids are ones that do not completely dissociate. Typically, 1% of it will, it, you know, ballpark number, uh, will dissociate. So, yeah, this is like 1% breakup. Yeah, it's thing. like 99% of it would still be stuck together, and then 1% has split Actually, up. let's say one more thing here about sure. the strong acids. That The reason that the strong acids completely dissociate is because they have weak bonds yes. that hold them together. And conversely, if they... A weak acid has strong a bonds. A weak acid would have strong bonds. I know that sounds kind of weird, um, but that's the truth because, yeah, it is. Yep. Let me uh, do a little diagram for you to help you give a perspective. If I have a strong acid, so I would like you to copy this little thing down in your notes, in the note section. If I have a strong acid, and this is, this is the acid, let's just call the acid HA, and this will be before you drop it into water. You do need water to draw the acid. Yeah. And then after, what are you going to find? You're not going to have any HA. You're going to have H pluses. HA is this much, but H positive and A negative is going to be the same, same as amount. what you started with. Right. So if you had one mole of your strong acid, when you put it in the water, you're going to have one mole of hydrogen ions and one mole of the anion. Conversely, if I were to do a weak acid, the graph would actually look quite a bit different. Yeah. Before... This would be the weak acid HA. This is the b before picture. Actually, I would prefer to flip that. Oh, well. After, what's going to happen is you're going to have just about as much as you started with of HA. And then of the just H's. A little bit of H. I might have drawn even too tall, frankly. Yep, and a little bit of A minus. You see, this is what it looks like. So you have start, yeah. So that's kind of a good uh, pictorial way to look at that. Now, how do you know if you have an acid that's strong or weak? This is super easy because there are only a very few strong acids. Yeah. There are? The HCl. Hydrochloric acid. Yep, HNO3. Nitric acid. H2SO4. Sulfuric, that's the Susie one, yeah. Yeah, okay. a little Susie drink it. Uh, let's see, uh, HClO3. Chloric acid. How about H4? Sorry, acid. Mistake. Uh, HI. Happy acid. Hi. Hi. Hydroiodic acid. Yep. HBr. H. Hydrobromic acid. And those are usually the six. Yeah, that's I have that's that's the, that's yeah, the big that's six. The list. There are others, but not nothing you'll ever encounter in this class. Bases are easy. We could quickly go through the strong bases. Also, completely dissociate. Yep. By the way. If you learn the six strong acids, everything else is weak. Yeah. For ones you'll encounter. All right, so same thing with bases. Strong ones completely dissociate, weak ones only partially. Super easy. Just exact get that same to know. Thing. Now, there are something we should talk about in terms of the bases are a bit, bit odd because mm -hmm. most bases that are weak are actually... Actually, let's just chat about something first. The strong bases would be like sodium hydroxide. It completely dissociates into sodiums plus hydroxides. And yep. most people think that the bases are going to all be hydroxides, something bonded to hydroxide. And those are. But most bases are not hydroxides. Right. They are what we call amines. And those are things with nitrogen. They have nitrogen. So we did an example a bit ago, and that was ammonia mm -hmm. um, NH3. So NH3 reacts with water. The, the rule isn't, doesn't isn't that it contains hydroxides, but that it produces hydroxides. Right. These are all weak bases, it turns out. That makes ammonium plus hydroxide. Hence, here's your hydroxide. So even though in ammonia there's no O's at all to make a hydroxide, you can make it by adding it to water. Yep. So um, lots of these, and you'll see some examples on the table that we'll see a little bit later. Right. Strong bases, frankly, there are just a few. There's a few. It, alkali metal hydroxides. What's an alkali metal? That's the group one, like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. So if you go All to the table number or uh, uh, column number one on the periodic table, um, excluding hydrogen, of course, then you have lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, um, etc. Down to hydroxide, cesium yeah. hydroxide, potassium, yeah. etc. Common ones: lithium and potassium hydroxide are the most two com the two most common ones you'll see. Actually, potassium too. Yeah. You, did you say potassium? I think I said sodium and potassium. I thought you said lithium and sodium. I might have. I don't Whatever. Know. The, I these these are the three ones. big ones. Yeah, you're hungry and so am I. Mm. Okay. That's why I had some Laffy Taffy with malic acid. There you go, the malic acid, man. Okay, pH and pOH. All right, we already discussed that pH 7 is an, uh, neutral. If, yep. it's, if it's less than 7, it's an acid. Yep. If it's more than 7, it's a base. Mr. Bergman, why is water pH of 7? Why do we call that neutral? Well, that's pretty simple because you see water... 
You know, water dissociates. Did you know that? I I, 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 bet, I, I hope you knew that. that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you think his water is HOA? <laughs> it would have been foolish to hire you if I didn't know that. Yeah, if you didn't know that, we'd had a problem. Do you know it breaks apart? One, uh, one every trillion breaks apart into H's and OH's. So if you were to take a view, a download picture, all right, go into a beaker filled with water. Put on your little scuba suit again. And then, you know, you ever watched the Magic School Bus? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mrs. Frizzle. Well, yeah. she, like, took the bus, take the Magic School Bus, and you take the Magic School Bus, and you oh, shrink nice. yourself down. I like the yellow. I like it. Yeah. Ooh, it a little moving, like a moving lines there in the back indicating it's traveling forward. So now it's going to dive in the water and shrink itself way, way down. You know what you'd find? You'd find lots of... Lots of H2Os. And they would be like little Mickey Mouse heads. Mm hmm orientated in different directions. But you know what? Every trillionth one, you know you'd find? Split up. You'd find an OH and an H. Ah. So every trillionth one breaks up. You say a trillionth, that isn't very many, is it? But it's plenty. It is quite a bit, actually. So one in every trillion breaks apart. And so we can actually write a K expression. Remember the Ks? We can yes. say the K a w, w for, for water, water duh, equals the hydrogens times the hydroxides. And there's a value for KW at 25 you know, Mr. Berman, why didn't you put that over HOH? Oh, yes, a good point. products over reactants. Well, because this ah, is a liquid. Yes. If it's a liquid, you do not, not count it. Yes, good point. Include liquids in equilibrium. So um, that is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Hence, the scale of 14, ah. as you'll find out in a little bit later. Oh, yes. So um, this is the KW expression, and uh, this is the value of it at 25 degrees Celsius. It's a little different, different temperatures. Mm -hmm. um, we won't worry too much about that. Close enough. Close enough. Okay, so that says that we can actually measure the P. P, by the way, if you didn't remember this from last year, is actually a logarithmic function. Yes. So the pH is the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen. What units does the concentration have to be in? Moles per liter. Yeah, which is molarity yes. equals moles per liter. Yeah, and the little brackets, in case you forget, that means concentration. And then P, so negative log of the concentration of the hydroxide atom or ion. Yeah. pH plus pOH is always equal to 14. 14. 10 to the negative pOH is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide. And 10 to the negative pH is equal to the concentration of, of the hydrogen. hydrogen. We did that last year, and we did it earlier this and year. And we just wrote so this, but just for grins, the concentration of the hydrogen times the concentration of the hydroxide is equal to 1 times 10, 10 to the minus 14th. 14. And you recall the scale is this scale from 0 to 14. You know, 0 to 7 is an acid, and 7 to 14 is a base, right? So the scale is actually measuring how much hydrogen ion is in the solution. If there's a lot, then it's, if there's more hydrogen than hydroxide, it's an acid. If there's less hydrogen than hydroxide, it's a base, and it's equal to acid. Yep. Now here's a little chart here to kind of give you some perspective. Uh, battery acid has a pH less than zero. Okay. Yeah, you can be less than zero. You yep. can be up to negative one. Household lye um, is way down here. And here's, of course, the freshly distilled water, seven. Milk's slightly acidic. Egg yolk, six point some change, or five and some change. You can read the yeah. chart here. Read You're chart. good. Okay. Now, how do we convert from one to the next? Now, before we fill this in, guys, hit pause and try to fill this in yourself. Yeah. Just do some practice. Maybe maybe watch us do the first one and then go back and do it some more. But don't just sit and write down everything we put in here because that won't help you at all. Yeah, and we've done something like this if you were in our class last year. So um, essentially, when I look at this first column and I see a pH, the pOH is the first thing I want to calculate because I can do 14 minus 2.3, and that's going to be 11 some change, 11.7. Yeah. And to do this hydrogen concentration, I will say 10 to the negative 2.3. Power, so I would do that. And that is 5.01 times 10 to the negative 3. And I would just do 10 to the negative 11.7 on that one. And that is, whoops, I punched the wrong button. 10 to the negative 11.7, we get... 2 uh, times 10 to the minus... 2 times 10 to the negative 12, essentially. Now, um, by the way, how do you know if it's an acid or base? I always just look at the pH, not the pOH column. The pH is 2 and 0.3, so that makes this an acid. Yep. Now, this would be very simple. I would do 4.5 minus 4.14 and be 9.5. Which, I, by the way, I could just jump over here and say that's a base, right? Yep. And this will be 10 to the power of negative 9.5. And that is 3.16 times 10 to the negative 10. And this will be... Uh, 2 point something uh, times... 3.16 times 10 to the negative 5, interestingly enough. Okay, now, if we have this number first, the hydrogen ion, then I can take the log of this number, negative the negative log. log of that, and that will give me the pH, which would be... 4.47. 
Subtract that from 14 gives me 9.53. 9 and then I could take 10 to the negative 9.53. 10 to the negative 9.53 is 2.95 times 10 to the negative 10. And that would be a what? That looks like a uh, pH 4 acid. Yep. Yeah, look in the pH. I just look at the pH.